Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. It's the start of April. It's the start of a brand new month of pens in use. This month, my theme, they're all about pens that I think are good value. Not necessarily cheap, but good value for money. So join me now down on the mat. Let's jump on in and take a look at this month's selection. Welcome down to the table. Here I've got my notepad ready to go. This is Oxford Optic Paper. It's a B5 notebook. It's a really nice fountain pen friendly paper. I really like using this. As you see, it's my pens in use. I've been using this since January of last year. All the pens that we look at today, as I've already said, the good value. All the inks that I'm going to be using, they are all ink samples. You know, which is a good value way of testing out lots of different inks without spending a fortune. So I've tried to look here at things which are not so much cheap, but which are good value. One of the things this video may prompt is I'm hoping is a lot of conversation because what my interpretation of good value is, is likely different than yours. And it's one of the things I'd love to explore. What makes people think that, you know, pens, that inks, that even papers are good value. The first pen we're going to look at had to be the Jinhao 992. Two Australian dollars. Well, I'm saying two. It was actually $1.71. What I do with all my pens is I round up to the nearest dollar. And all the prices are quirk there, Australian dollars. This is in the transparent brown. I've got all the transparent colours of this pen. They're just so nice. Now, there is a downside to it. They've all got fine nibs. I'm not a fine nib person. And I will be honest, in this month's selection, we've got a few fine nibbed pens. But it's interesting because when I was doing my test writing, I, was, I actually quite enjoyed using it. And in the past, whenever I've used this, I've enjoyed using it. I think because, you know, it's good value, but also it means that by moving away from just using broad nibs, it fetches a little bit of newness into my writing. Anyway, let's start writing with this. It is sort of usable unposted. I find with this pen though, it's best to use it posted. It does post really well. So here we've got a Jinhao 992 with a fine nib. And as I said, it was two Aussie dollars. The ink, I am using the sample that I got of this. I've since bought a full bottle of it. But the ink, it's by Robert Oster. And it's Cafe Crema. I mean, just look at the shading that we're seeing on here. It's absolutely beautiful. So much character comes to the writing with this ink. I absolutely love it. And this is actually what got me hooked on brown inks. Drying time, so we go immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. One minute. After a minute, that's dry. Now this pen, it is a cartridge converter. So there's a the converter. What I've done with all the pens this month, because I'm using samples, they've all been filled with a syringe. So I'm able to get really good fills. I do find with these 992s that the ink in them tend to last a long time anyway. So I'm not expecting this to run out. But anyway, this is the Jinhao 992 and a Robert Oster Cafe Crema. So now we're jumping in price. From two dollars that's not difficult to do is it and we're going to go to a platinum preppy so when i bought this it was eight aussie dollars i think they've gone up a little bit since then let's take the cap off i keep wanting to unscrew it so platinum preppy steel nib there we go this one is the size is actually 0 05, which I believe is roughly equivalent to a medium. Got to remember though, this is a Japanese nib, so it's 
I'm tending more towards the fine, I think. We'll see when we write. I love that this is completely transparent. Let me just pop the cap back on. You know, so we can see through there, we can see the converter. One thing with this pen, similar to the 992 as well, because everything's plastic, there's loads of threads on here. You could eyedropper this pen if you want. There's nothing stopping you. Personally, I tend to use a converter. What's stupid about this, you have to buy the converter separately. With the 992, it comes with it. The converter cost me more than the pen. So I've only got one converter and I swap it between various platinum pens that I have. So I usually only have one platinum pen inked up at a time. I think I need to get myself another couple of converters, but that's something which I'll look at in the near future. I like this pen. It's another one. It's quite short. You need to use it posted. You know, it's $8. It is good value. Let's write with this one. So we've got here. So we've got a bit there of a hard start. I did test write with all these yesterday, and it's the first time I've actually had an issue with that. Could be because I've had that cap on and off over the past few hours as I've been checking everything out and getting ready for this recording. So we've got here a platinum. It's not a 3776, is it? It's the preppy. Oh, I wish I could get a 3776 for only eight Aussie dollars. It's the medium 05. Eight dollars the cost. The ink is by Lamy. And it's part of the crystal series. And I'm going to mangle the pronunciation Benitoite. I've most probably pronounced that wrong. This is an unusual ink for me. I got a set with samples of most of the Crystal series about 18 months ago. To be honest, they've sat in my box because I did try a couple, wasn't overly impressed by them. So I thought, let's, let's pull some out. So I actually do have another one in this series later on. I'm quite liking this. It's like a grey blue colour, quite unusual. And I think I may find myself using it a, a little bit more. It's also not as saturated as I tend to go for. I quite often like saturated inks. And this one, you know, not quite as saturated as usual. Dry times. So we go immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, that's dry. So this does seem to be quite a lot drier than what we were seeing with the Cafe Crema. Still seeing a little bit of shading, a little bit of variation there in the colour. One of the things I need to be monitoring for this month, as we saw, was that hard start there. I'll keep an eye on that. That's one of the things I'll try and test for. So this is the Platinum Preppy with Lamy Crystal Benito White. Let's move the page up ever so slightly. Pen number three. One of my favourite pens, Jinhao 100. I've got three of these. I'm starting the month with the blue one. Not sure, I may change that if this runs out of ink. Or I may just fill this up with the same ink colour. I'm not quite decided on that. This is the Jinhao 100 Centennial. This is in the blue colour. I like this. A really nice pretty pen. Number six size nib. It's still got the original Jinhao nib that came with it. I've not felt the need to change it. It's another one, cartridge converter. Cartridge comes with the pen. Most Jinhao pens come with a cartridge. It's not one I would eyedropper though. It's all metal fittings. This is a pen comfy to use unposted. I always use this unposted. The section's quite nice, it's nice and wide. So we've got here a Jinhao 100. The nib on here is a medium. It's another thing I like about this series, I can get a medium nib. The ink, oh, before we do the ink, we'll do the price. Again, we're jumping up in price. 
when I bought this, it was 15 Aussie dollars. They've gone up. They're now about 25-ish, depending on where you get it from. I still think the good value, I've got to be honest, even at 25. The ink, Robert Toster. Great Southern Ocean. Quite a long name, that one. Nice, gorgeous. I want to say it's a dark grey with a little bit of blue in it. Might be one, I don't know, is it blue-black? I can never tell really what colour family that ink should fit in. But this, to me, I would say this is a dark, bluey grey. Drying times. Immediate. 10 seconds. Almost dry there. 30 seconds. Yeah, 30 seconds. Another one that's dry. So this is the Jin Hao 100 and Robert Oster Great Southern Ocean. I'm just going to move the page up a little bit again. Try to keep the lap page I'm working with or the area I'm working with roughly centre of the camera if I can. Pen number four. We're jumping manufacturers. We're going to Moon Man or Marjon. This is the Marjon T5. This is in the purple colour. I absolutely love the colour of this pen. I think it's so pretty. You know, we've got a lot of darkness there. And then as you turn it around, you get pop. Just that hint of colour. Very understated. Very nice. It's another pen. Fits nicely in my hand. Don't need to post this. I believe you can post it. Doesn't feel very secure though. Very loose. I find it's nice enough to use unposted. Unlike the other two, other two, unlike the other three, this one is a piston filler. It's got a little ink window. One of my complaints about this, the ink window, not quite big enough for me. I'd like to have seen double the size. But it's still, it's usable. Again, I actually did fill this with a syringe. I unscrewed the nib unit to do that. Very nice pen. Let's do some writing with this one. So we've got a marge on. T5. Again, it's a medium nib, but it looks a wider line than I was seeing with the Jinhao 100. We're virtually doubling in price now. 27 Aussie dollars. The ink in here is by Noodler or Noodlers and it's North African Violet. Nice dark purple colour here. I think it goes quite well with the pen. I may actually try in here. I'm just thinking out loud now. If this runs out the, during the month, which I don't think it will, I actually might try something like Diamine and Claret in here. I think that would be a really good colour match. Dry times. So we go immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Again, 30 seconds, that's dry. Another pen, really enjoy using it. Gives a nice line and quite a reasonable drying time as well. So this is the Marjon T5 with Noodler's North African Violet. Move the page up one more time. Let's go all the way up and we can get the last two pens in without moving the page. Now, you may be saying, Gary, in your past months, the last three pens have been over $100. We're talking about value this month, and I'm going to be honest with you. And I did fetch this up in my halftime report, which came out earlier on in March. How can you say that a pen over $100 is good value? Let's be honest, they ain't cheap. They might be good value. They might be inexpensive, even though they're a lot of money. But to me, when I'm talking about good value pens, I struggle to say anything over $100 is good value. When I can get a pen at two dollars which still does what i want so this is why all this month's pens they're actually all under fifty dollars let's look at our next pen though pen number five moon man m800 i've got all four colors in this but i thought i'd fetch out the blue one mainly because i haven't used it for a while just look at this pretty color 
This is, I like to say it's heavily inspired by the Leonardo Memento Zero pens. I actually got these because I was humming and harrowing. I was seeing the Leonardo pens. And I will be honest, I absolutely love the Leonardo pens. And I was thinking, is it worth spending all that money? Will I enjoy using it? When I saw these at, you know, maybe a quarter, if not less than a quarter of the price, I thought, I'm going to get these first. I'm going to try these first. I loved using these. And that's what led me to buy my first Leonardo, which has led me to buy about seven different Italian pens. So it was a good gateway pen, I've got to be honest. And I do find with a number of these other pens, they're good gateway pens into some of the more expensive versions. This pen, it comes with the Moonman nib. There we go. There is a version of these pens where you can get with a Bock nib. You do pay more for that. It's got the classic Leonardo shape there that we see in the section. I find that very, very comfortable. Unlike the Leonardo's, this one's a cartridge converter. Again, comes with a converter. Metal fittings, so it's not something that we can eyedropper. Let's write. So we've got here a... I'm going to call it Marjon. Do you know, every time I write that, I want to put M-A-H. The Marjon M800. Fine nib. If they released these pens with medium nibs or ideally broad nibs, to be honest, I'd buy another set of each. I love writing with this pen. It's really comfortable. Fits really well in my hand unposted. The ink, it's a Lamy one again. So it's Lamy, Crystal, Azurite. This is, I want to say it's dark blue, but I do think it's more with like purple tinges. So it's like a dark bluey purple ink. Again, not used it that much. On here, it looks all right. Be interested to see how this goes on some of my other papers. Drying times, so we go immediate. Looks very wet, doesn't it? 10 seconds. 30 seconds. That's nearly dry there. I don't think I'm going to go for a minute because it's really just a teeny amount of smudging. So it went from very, very wet at the start to drying actually quite quickly. I think it's a nice colour. I do actually think it goes well with this blue of the pen. Quite nice. So that's the Marjon or the Moonman M800 and Lamy Crystal as a right. I forgot to tell you the price. The price of this pen when I bought it, was 35 Aussie dollars. Again, it's another one I do think is good value. I love using them. I have a couple of months where I don't have one inked up, but generally I've got one of the four pens inked up, and one of them I've changed the nib already as well. So it's dead easy to pull the nib out and change that. The final pen, the most expensive pen of this month, or certainly of the starting lineup, that goes to this. This is the Twisby Eco. I was torn between this and the Diamond 580, but this went out because it was that little bit cheaper. Another piston filling pen. I love the transparent nature of the Ecos. I just love seeing that ink there. You know, it's an orange ink. It's an orange colored pen. Why I think these are good value, you know, yes, the $45, it might be a bit more now, but there's so much flexibility. You can pull the nib out and swap it dead easy. I've got three Ecos and I actually bought this with a 1.1 stub. But since then, I've pulled that nib out and put it into one of the others. So in here, I've actually got a fine nib. Number five size nibs. I believe the nibs are made by Yoho. I'm not 100% certain on that one though. It's a nice pen to hold. Section is a little bit on the thin side. We'll see how that goes during the month. Again, an eco. I've always got an eco inked up. They're just so convenient, so handy. And so easy to drop like that. So we've got here a Twisby eco with a fine nib. 
I did think about putting the 1.1 back on here, but I thought, well, the rest of the pens, they're fines and mediums. Let's keep it consistent. As I've already said, when I got this, it was 45 Aussie dollars. Unlike most of the other pens, there's some really nice feedback coming on this. The ink is by Robert Hoster. And it's orange. I've surprised myself over the last three or four months. I've been quite enjoying using orange inks. And when I was going through my samples and I saw this, and I thought, well, I've got that orange eco. Perfect match. Let's use that. Drying times. There's a media. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. One minute. After a minute, it was dry. We expect that. Though. So here we have the Twisby Eco with Robert Oster Orange. Let me just swap over the view and fetch the pens back for one final look. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Why not join me in this challenge? Why not pick the pens that you think are good value for money and only use those this month? I always love these themes because it's an idea of challenging what pens you would normally use and try and go for something a little bit different. Please drop your comments down below. What pens are you using this month? Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.